I'm recording this episode because somebody responded to a tweet of mine, not just any tweet, a tweet of mine from December last year. For those of you who listen to the podcast, you know that I make a TikTok every day, at least one TikTok every day, and I use a tool called reusevideo.com to make it so whenever I put out a TikTok, it comes out everywhere else without the TikTok watermark. One of those places that it comes out is Twitter is X. I started a new Twitter when I started the TikTok so that my TikToks could come out on that Twitter, on that account, because I was just testing TikToks. I think my content when I started was really bad. Now it's not as bad. And I didn't want to deluge my, my existing followers with bad content. So I started that account and then the account grew and grew and grew. And now the account's big enough that I made it my main Twitter. That account is called Show Progress. If you search Show Progress, that's the account handle. The name of it is Edward Builds. And I was doing something really well with my TikToks, which I stopped doing. I used to have it. So for SEO reasons, you know, I, I, I'm probably one of the best SEOs in the world. I love SEO. It's my favorite marketing channel. I talk about it all the time. And I used to put really long descriptions into TikTok because everything is searchable and everything is indexed. Unless you make it not indexed, unless you manually set it to not be indexed, everything is indexed and everything can be searched. And so I have this post from December 27th, 2022, and it's one of my videos that originated on TikTok and just automatically came out with my automation with my reusevideo.com automation on to Twitter, on to X. It wasn't called X at the time. It was called Twitter because it was December last year. Post says, build in public day 57, proofread a revision of my high performing article about YouTube gaming, then stripped the HTML from Google Docs and pasted it into WordPress. Finally, started on a blog template for all my posts. I love WordPress and Elementor. There was a video attached. The video was one minute. The video of when I first got to Warsaw last year. Now I'm in Wrocław, a different city in Poland, after spending the last half a year in my home in New York City, where I am from, in Brooklyn. Now I'm in Poland, a small city, back and forth. So I get a comment on this almost a year old tweet from this guy, and he says, I want to build code that automatically takes YouTube audio from an embedded video and converts it to WordPress page HTML, not successfully done yet. And I asked this person, I said, I said, this is an old tweet. How did you come across it? The person says, I was searching to see if anyone has done that. So the keyword combination led me to you. Everything is indexable. And it had me thinking because now I write my TikTok descriptions to be very short. YouTube short titles are only 100 characters long. Anything over that gets cut off. And so my videos look quite bad. And I theorized at the time that the videos on YouTube were not performing very well because the titles were longer. I don't know if that's true anymore. But because of that theory, I started making all of my titles shorter. And I think I've been missing out on a lot of traffic because of this. I think I've been missing out on a lot of search traffic because I have been making my TikTok title shorter and everything is indexable and everything comes out everywhere else. And everything, every social media platform is its own search engine. X, Twitter being a great example of this, what just happened. This guy came across a one-year-old tweet of mine just searching because I put in all these extra detail, all these keywords into the description for the video, which then came out as a tweet. And so if you want an easy way to get traffic, if you're making videos or if you're making pictures, write long descriptions for them, write long tweets and your stuff will be indexed. Everything is indexable. This show, this show, The Edward Show, I'm a marketing nerd. I would say that I'm a marketing nerd turned branding nerd. Now I'm obsessed with branding. I am obsessed with branding now. I'm obsessed with building a strong, enduring brand. But at the heart of this, I am an intense marketing nerd. I like data. I like seeing numbers. I like seeing dates. I like figuring out how algorithms work and figuring out why different weird things on the internet are happening. And this is one thing that to me is weird that this tweet is so old and this person came across it. Also, despite being a bad video because of all of the text in it, the video gets a decent amount of views just because there's so many keywords in it. I didn't even realize that at the time. This is something that I'm just noticing now. This video is not very good. It's still when I'm learning how to make engaging content, engaging videos, and it has 615 views. The tweet has 615 views, which is a lot at the time, considering at the time I had very few followers, very, very few followers, and any other tweets weren't getting that many views. And I think these views accrued over time just because I'm using so many keywords in my tweet, in the video, in the content. 
And so write long descriptions. If you can, write long things to go along with your content. If you don't want to do that, this is one instance where you can use AI to generate something. This is one instance where you can use AI to generate a paragraph of text for you. For me, I'll probably just continue to write it out because I like thinking of the keywords that might be searched. But I do believe that ChatGPT could be good enough for something like this. And I think a lot of search engines don't filter out AI content as strongly as Google does. Or I should, I should be specific, don't filter out AI text as strongly as Google does. So using AI generated text could be a way to get rich descriptions for the content that you're making. This is the way that my nerd marketing brain works. I find something that is leading to more traffic. I say, how do I automate that? How do I make, make that easier? How do I keep doing that? And this is an example of that. And so now what you're going to see me do is when I put up a TikTok, when I put up a daily video, I'm going to put rich descriptions with it. I'm going to go back to doing what I did before. And I'm going to add four hashtags. I always add four hashtags to my video. People ask me, hey, how many hashtags do you use? And the answer is four. Four hashtags. Even if it's a, even if it's a podcast, I use four hashtags. And this is another reason why I love consistency, why I love content flywheels, and why the internet is beautiful. I love consistency in content flywheels because the more content you make, the bigger library you have, everything becomes searchable, everything becomes indexable, people can find you for more reasons, your exposure increases. It increases and increases and increases. And that's why I'm obsessed with brands. And that is why I think starting a new brand is atrocious. Atrocious. It is a nasty, nasty way to defile your own life. Starting a new brand after building a brand for years and saying, no, this isn't working. This brand has failed. I'm going to start a new brand. When you actually have all these assets that could be generating traffic, if you just knew how to make them indexable or if you knew how to leverage them properly. And that's something that I try to teach on this show. For example, you could spend years writing a blog on a website and you don't know anything about SEO and the blog doesn't have much traffic. And it would have much traffic if you just connected it to Google Search Console and had your site maps indexed. Then it would increase in traffic dramatically. I have literally seen that happen. Or maybe you just have to generate a few backlinks for that blog and everything will rank super well because you're writing good content, but you're not directing people towards it. Maybe you're putting out a good product and you're not directing people towards it. And I, I just believe that people spend so much time making a product, even making a library, and it doesn't get immediate traction. And then they abandon it and they have to start again. And that's such a waste of time and effort. When if you just kept working on that thing in just a few smarter ways, the effort that you we're putting into it would compound and compound and compound and compound. Now I want to talk about why the internet is, is beautiful really fast. The internet is beautiful because I made that video. And this is one example, one example of many. I, at that time I was putting out four to five TikToks a day in the last couple of days, because I recorded a recent episode, I think it was yesterday about Sam Altman being fired from OpenAI, And so I went hard making TikToks, making videos about Sam Altman's relationship to open AI, but normally it's one video a day. I've switched it to one video a day. If you want to learn why I did that, I wrote a long post about it. It's on my website, edwardsturm.com forward slash articles, where I just talk about as a recent one. It's like how I built my TikTok audience. And I list everything that I learned. But now I put out usually one a day. If there's some big thing in tech going on, it's four to five a day. And like I said, these videos, they come out everywhere else. And so the internet is beautiful because if one channel slows, another grows. Oh my God, that rhymes. I got to do something with that. If one channel slows, this was I literally just said that now and realized that. If one channel slows, another grows. That is so good. But that is the reality when your content comes out simultaneously everywhere. And everybody who I have using reusevideo.com, everybody who, I, who, who is using this, they say the same thing. You know, TikTok was lagging for me or IG Reels was lagging for me or X was lagging for me. But then IG Reels was popping off. TikTok was popping up. The other ones were popping off. And I've seen that time and time again. And the internet is beautiful because there are so many channels, so many channels for people to discover you, to discover your brand, for your content to work into itself. And I love that. And if you put in rich descriptions for your content, because say it with me, everything is indexable, people will discover you in so, so, so many ways. This is episode 137 of The Edward Show. I had to pause for a minute there because I can't believe that I've done 137 episodes so far. Somehow I have. 137 episodes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoy this episode. I hope you enjoy all of my episodes. I hope I bring 
value. If I do, let me know. It, it really helps me. I got a really nice message today. It was a sincere message, an authentic message. I'm going to read it to you. When people join my newsletter, edwardsturm.com forward slash newsletter, when people join my newsletter, I have an automatic drip that goes out and it asks you, hey, who are you? What do you do? And this one guy said, his name was Mark, and he said, I'm the father of an entrepreneur slash student musician producer working to assist with digital marketing issues. I like your stuff and the way you approach it. Thanks, Mark. And I just, I said to him, I'm like, Mark, that was such a sincere message. People are not that sincere usually, and I appreciate it. So if you enjoy this, let me know. I like to hear that. I will talk to all of you again tomorrow. Bye now.